Excellent. So th thank you for the intro. I'm using very uh, low tech uh, technology. I'm actually parked on the side of a freeway or driving south in Utah, but the organizers asked uh, to uh, see the entrepreneur in its natural habitat. So I apologize for the unusual nature but so uh, yes my name is amir uh Khazar shahi i work in intel's corporate venture arm uh, intel capital and i was an entrepreneur uh no longer potentially in the future and uh, so i'll give you a very short history of my entrepreneurial experience uh, with some context hopefully it'll be interesting uh, next slide please so uh all of you know that the history of computers and ai ha have been intertwined since the very beginning of both fields so john von neumann uh, depicted on the left uh, spent many years building the first computers as well as doing an amazing uh, array of other things uh, but near the end of his life uh, he became very interested in neuroscience and uh, in a book that was published posthumously it's hard to read the title but it says the computer and the brain um, he uh, asked some questions about uh, how uh, biological brains uh, differ from uh, existing computers, the ones that he had just built. And those, those computers are actually quite similar to the ones we have today. Uh, the other quite, some questions were, um, um, in addition, like how can uh, biological brains inform uh, how we build computers in the future? And more specific things such as how do you do computation with imprecise elements, neurons, to do very precise inferences that the brain does uh, very readily. So I'll talk about three ways that happen chronologically um, um, where I try to attack some of the questions that uh, by Norman asked. Next slide, please. So the first, uh, my first attempt was I was uh, studying neuroscience at Berkeley and I was trying to uh, kind of untangle this diagram that goes from left to right. I was uh, recording from visual cortex uh, in uh, mammals and trying to understand how the microarchitecture of cortex, the functional circuitry, and the neurobiology uh, and the signaling um, mapped somehow to uh, machine learning. How, how does the brain perform, again, precise inferences, do probabilistic inference? This proved to be uh, quite challenging and humbling. I'm actually back at Berkeley uh, trying to re-attack this problem a slightly different way. But uh, next slide, please. Instead, I tried to um, attack the problem in an easier way. This was, uh, so now from going from right to left, um, instead of going from neurons to uh, machine learning, I decided to go from machine learning to uh, the substrate. So this became my startup Nirvana. Um, and we started with uh, compute primitives, um, deep, deep neural networks on the right. And we basically designed workload optimized hardware and software uh, to run these networks. And there were a very compelling economics to do so. This was in 2014, so things have changed quite a bit since then. But uh, at that time, it was becoming pretty clear that um, neural networks uh, are gonna become uh, really important uh, in consumer devices and all sorts of things in industry. So Intel acquired my company of uh, 40 people. It was quite small. And uh, it did this unusual thing that it made it its uh, AI business unit. And I helped grow this business unit to more than a thousand people. And you can imagine as a neuroscientist in a semiconductor manufacturing company, it was a really bizarre uh, state of affairs, lots of learnings, uh, but next slide, please. But uh, so our processor, our, one of our first processors appeared in this book by Hennessy and Patterson, which is the standard text in computer architecture. And I got the feeling that uh, that's like as good a signal for me to move on to the next thing. So next slide. And this is the last thread uh, of the three. So I started with uh, neurons to machine learning, uh, machine learning to substrate. And now I'm basically attacking directly from substrate to computation. And what's depicted on the slide is Intel's business plan. It's uh, quite hilarious. I encourage you to take a look at it. There's typos. and. Um, uh, it's, it's crazily brief, but basically uh, I've highlighted some of the technical terms used. And when I read this as a neuroscientist, I kind of puzzled over them. So crystal growth, thin films, photolithographic masking. Uh, I had no idea what these terms meant. So I figured I, I'm at Intel. I might as well uh, try to figure out what this stuff is and how I can leverage it to uh, maybe approach uh, computation in a fundamentally different way. So next slide, please. 
And another note is before uh, joining Intel or before selling my company to Intel, I had read this very curious review paper uh, by Igor Markov in Nature, August, 2014. And what this paper did was it systematically went through all the purported fundamental limits of um, computation building computers uh, one by one and argued that all of these limits are in some rigorous sense um, quite loose. So, um, and if you go to the next slide, that in, in all of these areas, and I've listed a few, that there's quite a lot of room at the bottom. So again, I might be stating the obvious for many of you in the audience and speakers, but again, I just remember I was a neuroscientist and previous to that, I was a derivatives trader on Wall Street. And previous to that, I was studying high energy physics theory. So none of those things informed any of uh, these things that I'm learning today, and maybe that's why I'm so excited about them. Uh, naivete is actually very, very helpful as an entrepreneur and doing new things. So uh, some of the things I've listed, uh, again, limits are loose. We have um, on the top left, uh, I'm hope, I hope these are uh, readable. Uh, so gate dioelectric thickness, uh, scaling, uh, basic CMOS scaling, one of the most incredible driving forces for techno technological uh, innovation in the last 50 years. And then on the top right, uh, increasing metal layers over time, bottom left, optical proximity correction using really interesting uh, algorithmic uh, photolithographic techniques uh, and a, a whole assortment of other things. So these are the things I'm, I'm working on today. And if you go to the next slide, I'll give you a, just a little summary. So at the top, so what do I mean by going from substrate to computation specifically? Uh, uh, I've listed some areas here. So beyond CMOS devices. So we are using at, at Intel, um, we are researching very actively uh, room temperature uh, quantum materials, not at cryogenic temperatures, that's quantum computing, but using room temperature um, device, uh, materials such as multiferroics and exploiting electron charge and spin in clever ways to uh, build uh, novel transistors. Uh, another area that I'm uh, interested in and somewhat related to LIDAR uh, is silicon photonics. So instead of using fermions, electrons, using uh, bosons, uh, photons to do computation, they have quite different properties. And uh, uh, photons are used for communication and uh, most recently uh, in computation, um, using mock center interferometers and uh, micro ring resonators and so forth and so on. And there's a bunch of startups that are very exciting in the space that we're following that are doing compute. And also mo more recently, I've been starting to think about how to do memory with photons. Uh, a few other areas at Intel I have enlisted, phase change materials, and there are lots of things going on at the device level, at the materials level, and at the circuit, uh, micro circuit level um, I've been focused on for the past two years. And uh, the last uh, direction is this odd thing I call the physics of com computation is how do you uh, directly exploit the properties of devices and circuits at the nanoscale to do novel forms of computation, such as doing oscillatory computing or doing MCMC sampling using analog devices. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm uh, back at, at Berkeley as a, basically as a student. I'm taking uh, even introductory classes in uh, um, design, circuit design, and it's a little bit odd to have uh, someone who started a chip company taking basic classes, but I'm kind of approaching it again from a different view that how do we, how do, we uh, do things differently? Uh, and also I've worked in the venture capital arm. I, I mentioned I have a background in finance, so I um, invest in startups. I do technical pathfinding and M&A for Intel, and that's a really great way to have a grounding in the real world. I'm going to stop there.